Hey guys, Oliver here, I'm bringing you a tutorial of something I found that I think is pretty cool and a lot of you editors out there could use, and it's basically automatic screen pumps. Now this is done in After Effects, I have After Effects CS6 I believe, and you need a plugin called, called Sound Keys, this is part of the trap code suite from Red Giant, it's really easy to get a crack of, you can just look it up on YouTube, super easy. Um, so that's basically all you need in After Effects. So sound keys from Trap Code Suite in After Effects, as um, you can, as you might be able to see in my uh, visualizer tests uh, that I posted a couple of days ago. I think uh, it kind of zooms in, kind of like a screen pump with the beat, and that's done all automatically. Same with this, sim with my uh, symbol thing right here. That's all zooming in and out to the beat. I'm not sure if you can hear it because I haven't really tested my mic levels very much, but I can try and playing it. Uh, see, so maybe you can see what I'm talking about. So that's that, I'm not sure, it's kind of laggy, but, um, so, that's basically what I mean if you didn't get any of that, uh, sorry. But basically, uh, just create a new project, which I already have, so I'm not sure why I just created another one. But, um, yeah, so basically you're gonna probably want to have a clip, so let's go ahead and, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. This is as long as we have, like, the codex to use and stuff, and as long as you're, I'm gonna put my frame rate to 30. So it, uh, I have to create a composition first, so it's easier to render and stuff. So go ahead and create a new composition. It should open up like that. I'm gonna fit it so it's just nicer. Except how it's so zoomed out. I'm gonna put my uh, FPS to 30. It doesn't really matter what yours is. Um, but that's what I'm just gonna keep that for this tutorial. I'm gonna put the half as well as half. There we go. So now you're gonna need a song. I guess you could use the audio from this if you wanted to, because you can really link it to like really any part of the song. But I'm just not gonna do that just for because uh, I've never really I haven't practiced that. So I'm gonna go import another uh, like a song, and I don't really have a song lined up to use. Uh, I have a lot of stuff in here. Um, preferably something that won't get this video copyright strike. That's that's always preferable. So, uh, I guess. Uh, I don't even know what to use, to be honest. It doesn't matter, and I'm not sure why it's taking. So I don't want to use the same song, but uh, so much. All right, let's just use this for absolutely no reason. So it's gonna go and drag that into your uh, composition. So now if we render this, uh, what you should have, actually you might want to mute that, depending if you're putting in custom gun, gun sounds or not, but that's just what I would suggest. So we have this. So I'm gonna mute that. So we have the whole clip here. And we have the song, so I wanna actually move the song forward to a part where we actually have like kicks and snares and stuff like that in the song So after you have it synced up to whatever part of the song you're going to be uh, using, go ahead and create a new adjustment layer. Uh, you might be able to use a solid, I don't know. And then go to your effects and presets, which for me is over here, I'm not sure where it is on yours because it's different for everyone, and then click and drag your sound keys onto your adjustment layer. And then audio layer, you're going to want to choose whatever uh, song you're using with and it'll, and it'll you won't be able to see your clip if this is above it which i would suggest you can actually mess with this stuff so go to and select your uh, uh, adjustment layer and click e on your keyboard just to open up the effects without having uh, about having like a ton of stuff there so i would highly recommend uh keeping this but i guess if you know what you're doing you don't have to do that so this is the first range it's kind of hard to explain basically it's like this is the lower end pitched sounds of the song so the lower hertz and this is the higher hertz so like 
kicks will be down here, the sub base will be down here, and plucks and other stuff will probably be up here. And since we're gonna link this to our kicks is here, let me ram preview this so you can kind of see what I'm talking about actually. So let me just bambling, bumbling on. Sorry, I can't talk today. So uh, it's uh, an audio graph, as you probably noticed. That's yeah, actually quite loud, so I am going to turn this down, which I should have done before, but I'm lazy, so I didn't do that. Just audio. Oh, let's do negative three decibels. That should work well. So we can see all our kicks are like in these four uh, thingamajigs. So we're going to uh, put all the top one around that area. Put the bottom one. I like to put at the bottom, and this is how much output the uh, it's gonna output to whatever link is to the output. It's kind of confusing, but basically, if you link the scale to this graph output on the first range, the higher this is, the higher the output's gonna be, and the lower this is, the lower the output's gonna be. So basically, it could on your scale, it could be super zoomed out or super zoomed in, depending on this, I guess. If that made any sense, I'm not terribly good at explaining stuff, so I apologize if that made no sense, but let's just do it about right there and see how this is turning out. Let's move this uh, thing over one or two, I guess that works too, and then scoot this over a little bit. It's, you have to play with it a little bit. Ram preview this again. Alright, that's way too much of an output, so I'm just going to scoot this up some. That's pretty nice right there, so we can use that. Fall off is like, uh, how quickly it will revert back to the, uh, minimum. Or the, to like, the output minimum. See, because it'll like, screen pump, if it's on instant, it'll zoom in, and then really quickly zoom back out. But if it's on... Expon exponential, I believe it's pronounced. It will zoom in and then more slowly zoom back out, and you can change this. I just leave it normally 1.5. It really depends on what kind of song you're doing. Output minus slash max. You can you can do whatever you want. Uh, I'm gonna put it to custom for now. And then to actually, and you might want to click this visible thing off so you can actually see your clip now. Oh, one last thing. Uh, you should do whenever you change any of these settings on any of the ranges go over here and click apply This will write the keyframes for the song that uh, Anything you link to the output is going to be based off of so if we go over here To our clip and go to transform we can and go to scale you see this uh, the keyframe stopwatch Hold alt and then click on it Holding alt and then you can release alt and then click on this click and hold and drag this to the output one and then just click anywhere to get rid of this typing box that's uh, typing the code. And now if we ran preview this, you can kind of see what I mean. That's obviously very bad because it's it's not zoomed in all the way. So I believe what works normally is like 90 to 120. Then again, it really depends on your song. And we're going to click apply, of course, because we have to rewrite these keyframes based on the new input. And then we're going to ram preview this again to see how it looks. ramp you some more of it so I can see more again that's kind of shaky but you can kind of just tinker around with sound keys until you get uh, what you want so we can put this for example we can oh, no, we still want to leave like that we can put this up like that and then we're gonna, of course, apply our keyframes again. So it'll be, so they'll be rewritten based on the new settings and that's a little zoomed out, but that's okay. We can fix that easily. I think that's zooming out. I'm not sure why it's doing that. You kick and it's, no, it's zooming in. It's just weird, but you can do 100. 
and if you want extreme screen pumps, you can do 100 and 150, you know, we rewrite our keyframes, of course, and then we can preview this again. For some reason, I think that's going in reverse, and I really don't know why, but you could just do like zero and a hundred, I think. I, I don't really play with negatives around that much, so yeah, that's wrong. But, uh, 100 and, neg and 50. Uh, just do whatever works, really. You know, just play around with it. So let's try this, I guess. I don't know, it's being weird, but normally it should work if you do this. Um, let's, um, I'm probably just, that's, well, that's basically it. All you have to do, of course, you can put on more ranges and link them and stuff like that so i'm just gonna keep messing around with this until i get something that really works so i guess that's gonna be what the rest of the video is so i mean if you don't have any time don't worry you that's basically yeah, that's, that's basically it uh, i just put these back down again because that made it weird higher keyframes um so that's basically it um that's basics of how to do automatic screen pumps for a Nice. I personally have always hated doing screen pumps. One, because I always forget them, and two, because they're a pain in the butt to do. But yeah, this is how you can do it automatically in AE, at least. Yeah. Let's reset that, because I'm stupid, lol. So yeah, I guess I'm just gonna spend some more time tinking around a fit to make it look better, and then I'll just render out the final thing put at the end of this video. So... I guess I'm not sure if I'm going to talk or not, if I'm going to fast forward this. I guess I'll just mute my mic and fast forward this part. So thanks for watching and I'm just going to keep messing around with this. When I close my eyes